Ideally, we would have had the same soft serve ice cream from the video. It was too difficult to find, so I actually got these ice cream cones, which is basically what they use in the video. So I guess it's not gonna look as pretty, but I feel like if this works, it will work just the same. There's things in this video that are a little bit questionable and you will see, but I think this one, this could truly be a brand new way of doing this. What they've done was they made a little hole all the way and because mine is open in the bottom, this is probably gonna start leaking, but I actually think that's fine. This is some toffee flavored topping. So they use like a pump in the video, but I honestly think this is gonna be fine. It's actually going in. We can fill up the whole thing. Like this just keeps going. Look at all that empty space that without this, without this way of doing it, this would just be space. Look, we've done a lot. Oh, no. That was the limit. Turns out the limit does exist. This is a topping that, oh no, I thought this was the one that goes, I have bought the wrong one. So I'm gonna fill up this bowl with chocolate because I kind of want to do it as like a dip kind of style. And ideally this chocolate would solidify, but because I bought the wrong one, this is actually the liquid one. This one doesn't solidify. It doesn't even matter. I'm happy that we were able. Oh no, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh wait, it is sticking. I mean, we did that. That actually looks really similar. If we crunched up some uh, nuts or something on top, this would have looked exactly the same. This is 100% a superior way to eat an ice cream, but what we do wanna know is where is the caramel, the toffee sauce that we put on the inside? Where does it go? Does it work when you bite into it? Let's find out. You can kind of see it dripping there and we did go a little bit wild with it. So this is kind of what's going on in my mouth as I was biting into it. Do you see all of this is gonna come out it actually stays in there. This is the embodiment of my idea for this video, which is new, sometimes strange, ways of eating foods that maybe you've never come across. And I don't think I'm ever gonna eat ice cream the same way ever again. I was today years old. How is it possible to use something your whole life and not know the true purpose of it? Are these like an international thing? I don't know if this is just a UK thing, but either way, the point is they're very, very popular. So popular that I feel like if this was a thing, if this was the reason they were shaped like that, we would have known. But if you've never seen one of these, the edges are kind of like, I think the word is like serrated. I never really thought about it, but turns out this is intentional. I honestly thought this was just aesthetics, but this came from the official TikTok account for the Ritz crackers. So it might be that they're just trying to sell cookies. It literally looks exactly like the cheese they use in color, texture, and it's also straight from the fridge just to keep it super real. But because I have a feeling that we might be disappointed, I also got some American cheese because I feel like with this one, this is 100% going to work. American cheese has never failed me. It has failed my, my digestive tract a few times. So using the crackers, I am going to, okay. It went in. Holy cheese butt crack. Now I understand why it's called a cracker. <laughs> this is incredible. And you can even cut into smaller slices, but I mean, let's see if we can peel them off easy. That is, I guess, important as well. This is incredible. You can even make like a miniature sandwich. This size is perfect. We've just been idiots all these years. I can't speak for everyone. I can speak for myself. I am an idiot. We're gonna try it with a real slice of cheese because I feel like this is how most people would do it. This is a bit more difficult to like divide. Okay, you might just need to apply a little bit more pressure, but no, that definitely does work. You might have to go twice with with like a tougher cheese like this one. It works just as well. This is very, very confusing. When I woke up this morning, I didn't know that my life was gonna change. And here I am. I feel like we've just switched realities. This is, I was not meant to experience this in my lifetime and now I have.
I have a strong feeling that we are being bamboozled with this video, but I'm still gonna give it a try because I want to believe. I've already got results here because we're very scientific about this and I want to give it the full amount of time in the fridge. But I kind of want to show you exactly what I did because I don't want you guys to say that I cheated or I didn't do it correctly. I'm pretty sure I did this correctly. It's just... I just don't think this is gonna change the way you guys are eating your milk tea. I tipped out some of the milk because obviously we wanted to get some space. I used the exact same tea they used in the video. I kind of tried to see how many tea bags they used. I think they used two, we'll put two or three, something like that. And then a whole lot of sugar. I'm not stupid or too stupid. So obviously I did think, what in the world is going to make this thick? Because sugar on its own, unless it's cooked, doesn't make anything thick. Is it maybe the tea bags? I was honestly confused, but because I really wanted to believe that this is real, I still gave it a try. I put the lid back on, I shook it quite well. In the video, I think it says a few hours, but I actually put this in the fridge overnight. It's been a full day, basically since this been in the fridge. So for this very first one, I did exactly the same that they've done in the video. And as you can see, this is very liquidy. I know it was a little bit liquidy in the video. I don't even think we could cut this with scissors because this is just liquid. If you followed exactly the same steps as the TikTok, this, this is what you get. And if you're looking for any kind of jelly, if you wanted to put the jelly in your tea or do a DIY bubble tea, I mean, I will show you. Nope. The only solid thing on the inside was the tea bags that we put in. I think we can safely say that this is not a better way to have your milk tea. Like, this is not the way to do it. This is not even real. Here I've got the exact same thing, except I did what I suspect they've done in the video, which is I added one teaspoon of gelatin. I'm not sure if it was one teaspoon. I wasn't measuring. I just added some gelatin into it. I mixed it and I put the lid on. And this was in the fridge for the same exact amount of time. I have no idea why they didn't mention gelatin. It seem it's like solid on top. I don't know if you guys can see. <gasps> it's gonna be so satisfying to cut into this one. If this works, it might be that we found ourselves a new way to have milk tea. Oh my God, this is definitely solid because there's nothing coming out. So this is the exact same steps left in the fridge for the same amount of time, except Except I added some gelatin. Do you see it even got the shape of the milk? This is beautiful. It's like jelly. And it's actually pretty like solid, like uniform. It's all the same color, the same amount of milkiness. I'm just gonna do what they've done in the video. It is solid. It's like, I'm obsessed with this texture. This is incredible. And I didn't even add that much gelatin, so I'm impressed. I can even see the recycling logos. Do exactly what they've done in the video, except also add some gelatin. Can we get it out? You could probably break this apart and maybe add this as bubble tea. I will say you do get a lot of tea powder in the bottom or something. I don't know if you can see it. What does it taste like? That is the question. What is the texture of this? That's really good. This is like solid bubble tea, except the wrong part of the bubble tea in the wrong texture, but also kind of better than bubble tea. This is actually incredible. <laughs> It's smooth, milky, bubble tea-ish. Let me know if you want me to make a whole video on TikTok on how I got here with the gelatin and what kind of gelatin I use and everything because this, you might want to recreate this. This is honestly good and I'm not bamboozling you. We don't do that over here. Even though this is not really a new, unique way of eating pizza, it kind of is. It is at least a new way of slicing it. And also, if there's any of you guys who work at restaurants and you might need a little snack here and there, just kidding. We wouldn't want to do that to these corporations. You don't want to eat their pizzas for free. I was gonna get a pizza from takeout, but then I realized every time I get a takeout pizza, it comes already sliced, so this was just easier. So I cooked it at home, and it's also got toppings, which I think is gonna be good to see if we can truly make this seem like nothing happened. I'm not gonna get too crazy with this, like we don't wanna remove a huge slice because that would not be realistic. I'm gonna steal some sausage and everything. I want to experience the criminal life. Honestly, you can't even see the slice that I did. I would say it's a pretty good slice 
just steal from the pizza, so... So let's see if it would look strange. Okay, I should have not sliced into that meatball. I might actually have to replace this one with this one. And the result is... I would never know. There is no way you'd ever know. Right? It just looks like a regular pizza. It looks just as good as before. And once we slice the other slices, and I know in the video they were cutting it in little strips. I don't think that's realistic because most pizza places actually... Oh, wow. Didn't expect to go to the hospital with a piece of bacon in my eyeball. Once we cut this into slices, you guys will see there is literally no way you would know. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. The FBI is gonna come for me. Even with you guys knowing what we've done to it. Can't even find it anymore. Okay, we're losing all the toppings because I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the same amount of slices and this is what you'll get. This is very much designed for people who work in a restaurant and they might want to sample some foods before <laughs> before they go to the tables or for food delivery and honestly, I'm not judging. I would say it would take you six pizzas to get like an okay meal. There is no way that you would ever know. No way. Do it again, please. craziest thing I've ever seen. How do you shake your drinks? <laughs> I probably watched this video 20 different times just to try to figure out is this stupid or is this genius? If I've been having problems shaking my drink at Starbucks. Mm. So I've got two regular lattes here. I put it in the fridge for a few hours and I think the vanilla syrup just kind of went to the bottom. Like I'm pretty sure I've been moving it very very slowly. We're gonna see if we're gonna be able to mix the vanilla syrup that's in the bottom using the technique from the video. So I separated the ice. We're gonna add the ice to it. Ooh, there's definitely loads of bits of plastic. Swimming in the ocean in 2025 be like. This is about the same amount of ice, so I'm gonna put the cap on. First of all, I'm gonna taste this one. And so I think the vanilla is all sitting in the bottom. So how would I shake this? I usually cover the little hole with my hand and then I shake it. But I do wonder if this is as effective. So I just spin it. You usually know I'm about to arrive when you can hear this in the distance. So. I think my method is pretty good. I mean, this is like, it's mixed. I can taste the vanilla. And for this one, we're gonna just use the shaking technique. If this spills all over my t-shirt, I'm gonna be so mad. It feels so stupid. It feels more difficult than what I do. And I have to use my tongue to like stop that. I feel like it's a lot easier the way I do it. Maybe I didn't shake enough, but this is not as well mixed as that one. In terms of spilling, it's pretty safe, even though it's very aggressive, the technique, but let's see. Okay, now it's it's well mixed now. The whole point of the video is whether these new techniques work, whether it's gonna change our minds going forward, and for me, I just don't think I have it in me yet to do this in public. I really admire if some of you guys wanna go for it, shake it, I will applaud it if I see you at Starbucks shaking your head, it's just not for me. Looking at the video, it does seem like it might work. However, without looking at the image, I don't think I would be able to recreate this. Am I stupid? Yes. Unless you're really good at maths and geometry or something, I honestly don't think I would be able to remember this. We will see, but honestly, this would be impossible for me to recreate without actually looking at the image. So I've got a cake here and we're gonna test it out with this. I think this is actually a good cake to test this with. And honestly, from looking at it, there's no way I could do this. So I'm looking at the image here and I'm gonna, we'll see. First thing they do is slice the cake in half, kind of like this. This is actually a really good cake to test this with because you can really see the difference. Okay, I think the second one goes like this. Oh my god, this is so confusing! I don't understand this. Wait, the video never finishes. Mm, interesting. I really don't wanna mess this up. And then, this is where we're at right now. I mean, you can't even see, but like, it's not, it's not going well. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I think we only have one cut left. This should be the brand new way to slice a cake. 
From looking at it, I don't really know if this is like working or not. Really need to invest in a ceiling camera. I do know. My bank account details will be in the description down below. I think the video is a little bit stupid because I think they start from this side to this side and the most intuitive thing is actually to make an X in the center and then an X next to it and then an X in the other side. I think that would be a much easier way to do this. This slice is exactly the same as this it doesn't have any crust! For all those people who don't like too much frosting, this is genius! All the slices are relatively the same, I think, apart from the ones on the outside. But the most impressive thing is, doesn't that look kind of bougie, like very patisserie style? Because there's no crust, it's just the top. The two edges are very much way bigger than the rest of the cake. So there's two of these on every side. This might be for the people who want to eat a lot of cake. But all the other slices are literally perfect. Like, I'm, I need to show you this. How satisfying is that? All these slices are basically the same size and most of them don't have any crust. This literally looks like an image from a video game or something. Like, even these are not that bad. Like, that's still better than your average cake slice. praying to the Jesus and gods of TikTok that this one actually works because this is life-changing. Garlic bread in the toaster. I didn't think about the fact that this might ruin my toaster with the dripping butter. The bread that I'm using is actually pretty thick, but it's not one of those specially made kind of breads. Okay, so they've only sliced it halfway through. This new way of eating garlic bread, whatever you want to call it. It's like 90% stupid, 10% in my work, which I would say it's very close to my personal brand. This is really difficult. This is not as easy as they made it seem. This is literally, I can't even describe to you. And this is the sharpest knife that I own. We're encountering some difficulties. So the trick is to go in the corners. Okay, this is difficult, but we're getting there. It's not perfect, but they said they did halfway through. Okay, that's as good as it gets. I'm gonna use some butter. We're not using too much because now I am getting worried about my toaster. Oh, my toaster is one of those where you can clean it up after, so it's not too bad, as long as it doesn't explode. It kind of softened it up in the microwave, so it kind of absorbs into the bread already a little bit. I feel like we're only making half of a garlic bread though because I didn't cut it enough to go all the way in. I'm gonna try to still push it all the way in. We're gonna use some garlic. Uh, I'm not using any salt because my butter is already salted. I'm gonna put the garlic. We kind of only buttered like half of it though, so that's not ideal, but it is what we've done. And this goes in the toaster. Please don't ruin my toaster. I can smell garlic bread faintly. It's not giving me like walking into Pizza Hut vibes yet. What we probably don't want is for this to jump. Okay, I think this is ready. It smells like Pizza Hut, it's ready. It is toasted. I don't think there's been any, not even a little bit of spilling. Toasting on it is pretty good. This might be the only time I cooked something that really shouldn't go in the toaster and it actually worked. I would still butter the outside while it's still warm. Half of it is not really, it doesn't have any garlic on it. I think you could even put a little bit of cheese, maybe Parmesan cheese on it, and it would taste so good. Even the dry bit, it still tastes like garlic. It really did absorb the flavor. Wow. Is TikTok really changing the way I am going to eat my garlic bread going forward? I think so. Wasn't expecting it, but we're taking a lot from this video. This is, this is really good. There's nothing else I can say. It's actually, try it. This seems all kinds of genius. 
So I am going to open the cake and then we're gonna try it out. I actually got a two or three layer cake because I feel like that's the best way to test this. If we're gonna test this out with a very small cake, it would obviously fit into the glass very easy. Most birthday cakes are actually this height. If this works, this is worth the dishwashing. We've got six glasses. I'm pretending we've got six friends. So, you know, very much hypothetical, very much not real. Let's imagine we didn't have a knife and we wanted to cut the cake and somehow we had a glass. This is very satisfying. I literally love this. The crunchy of the sprinkles and then we pull it out. Wait, how do you flip this now? One, two, that actually does come off pretty easy it is very much like a messy cup there's literally cake on the outside but it does look kind of cool even though it's upside down <laughs> and if you're interested this is what the cake looks like it looks like i just woke up at 3 a.m and i'm sleep eating again this is not a joke i sleep eat which is the weirdest thing i one day i will make a full video on this i do wonder if it gets to a point where we can't do this anymore that's why i got six glasses and also because i have to cut this up to freeze it anyways this goes down pretty well but it does get to a point where like this slice for example example it's a little bit awkward because it's smaller this is the best slice the one from the center oh someone got very lucky with this one that's a pretty good slice and this slice is for the person who says they're not hungry <laughs> Like this one is very small apart from the cups being really messy. This works. I I mean, I have nothing to hate this for This is the leftovers. I mean pretty like it's nothing too shocking to look at This is the last video without a ceiling camera. I get it. We hate it Let's say you did this because you didn't have a knife I don't think that's a good option because well, how are you gonna eat this you would still need spoons so you'd still need to wash six different spoons in order to eat this. But honestly, I think this is worth it. I would do this. If you try this for the aesthetic of it, which I think there's nothing wrong. I personally think this is really cool. If it's your birthday party, that's one way to make it memorable. Don't do it because you're trying to save up on washing a knife. When Morgan was little and we would go through the drive through um, we taught her to take the ketchup packet and tear it down this way. Okay, and then when you open the packet, she could dip her fries right in there. I don't really have any fries to test this with. We've got some of these potato crisps. I mean, that will do. We're here for the science, not for the snack. I really hope this works, but the only thing is we've only got two of these little tomato ketchups. Asking for one with my sandwich, easy. Asking for an extra one was really pushing my limits of social interaction. So we've got the little bag of tomato ketchup. And instead of opening it, you know, we're going to try to create a little pouch. How am I going to do this without this spilling everywhere? Is it? Is it? You do get a pouch. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the pouch. It's also dripping. In the video, it seemed like this. there was a lot more ketchup in it. Maybe mine are slightly smaller. And maybe that's why it spilled. But... <laughs> That is what we wanted from it. I'm pretty disappointed with it because I spilled a little bit. That definitely defeats the purpose. I really hope this works. This would be a great party trick. You know, when you really want to impress people, but you just, you don't have the looks or the words. This is so difficult. Might be, might be. That was perfect. I really hope I got that on camera because that was actually perfect. And let's see. Okay, this bit there is not opening. Okay, with a little help. This time around, I was actually like, it didn't spill when we opened it. I did get my fingers all dirty. I think this is one of those things where it takes a little bit of practice because the second time around, I was a lot better at doing this. I feel like it's possible that this is an improved way of eating ketchup when you have to dip things. However, I do think this needs practice. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. Masarap yung Nestle, pero mas masarap yung Selecta Super Thick na Vanilla. Selecta, baka naman. So, kukuha tayo ng Toyo. Ate Toyo. <laughs> okay, ayan. So, lagay tayo konti lang. Konting drop lang. Ayan. Marami na yan. Konti lang, ha? Next time, konti lang. Halu-haluin mo, ikot-ikutin mo, gaya ng pagpapaikot-ikot niya sa'yo. Ayan. 
tikman mo masarap. Yun lang. I wasn't really sure if this belonged to like a weird food combination. I feel like this might be a brand new way of eating ice cream because we're literally transforming ice cream from something sweet into something savory. I think this qualifies as a different way of eating ice cream. So I'm gonna start with some vanilla ice cream. I don't know exactly what language that was, but I kind of got the information on what was going on from the comment section. In case you didn't realize this is what was going on, we're going to add some soya sauce. This is so wild that it just has to work. Someone in the comments said that it tastes like caramel. Because soya sauce is, you know, like an everyday kind of ingredient, it might be that if it tastes like caramel, this might be worth it because I, I don't have caramel sauce just lying around in my house, but I always have some soya sauce. I'm gonna try to recreate this exactly the same way because I don't want this to just be gross. They actually use very, very little. Just literally a tiny little drop. Man, I really don't want to overdo this. We're gonna be here all night. Ugh. They actually mix this with the ice cream. Oh, it's going full caramel. I'm not too horrified with food combinations. I actually like most of them. I made a whole video on that, I think a few weeks ago. My brain is very accepting of new flavors, just new things in life in general. You know, sometimes other people are horrified and I'm like, no, that's that works. It's a little bit too dark and I don't think this is exactly what happened in the video. So I do want this to actually work. Someone please let me know where the person from the video was from because I don't want to like this might be a thing in your country. This literally looks like caramel ice cream. Do you see that is caramel ice cream? I would never tell the difference. It smells like shrimp. Chicken gyoza ice cream. Okay, let's give it a try. Wait a damn minute. What the? This is the best ice cream I have ever, ever had in my entire life. This just went from a plain, the cheapest you can buy at the supermarket, to something that has so much depth. It tastes like caramel, yes, but it also tastes like fancy caramel, like salted caramel. It's got like a very like umami flavor in it, savory, super sweet still. It hits every spot of like my flavor. How do you call the flavor receptors? It's hitting them. Oh my god, I've never eaten anything like that. Pause this video, like stop this video right now. This is, I literally don't care. Stop it, go to the supermarket. If you've got ice cream at home, just make it now. Normally I want people to watch my videos. This time around, I need you to experience this more than watching my video. My video is irrelevant right now. My favorite flavor of ice cream is soya sauce. Who would have thought? Honestly, not me. <laughs> Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. I've got my phone in front of the camera so I can see the pattern in which we cut it. Once again, this is not very easy to remember, but I do feel like this one's easier than the cake one. So if this works, this will be very handy. Sometimes you buy butter in which it has like the devising, like a ruler here, so you can divide this evenly, but this one actually doesn't. So this would be perfect for this kind of brand. As soon as it hits like maths territory, I'm out. Like my brain checks out. Like this looks too geometrical. The first thing we do is find the center, which actually is pretty easy, so. So then we're gonna cut it across, like diagonally, and then diagonally here as well. And now, I have no idea what's now. Oh wait, now we make kind of like a star. Is it? You know, good thing that butter has two different sides. That's like just incredible news. I didn't think that I would need this much assistance, but turns out I do. Okay, let me watch this frame by frame. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is an X. So, so corner corner so the middle of the butter is here and now we connect this corner to that center there so it turns out I wasn't doing anything wrong with the other one right here this is the center of it and we've officially divided the butter into four that looks like it's evenly divided, but there is only one way to find out. We need to play very tense music because first stick of butter weighs 59 grams. Back to zero. 61. That's, that's not too bad. The next one. 66. <laughs> and the next one. 62. 
Okay, so I know what happened. It's very easy to know where to cut on the very top because you've got the marks, but the problem is once you start slicing, you kind of go diagonally sometimes. So this one went a little bit sideways. So I wouldn't say this is the best way to do this. I would honestly say this is as good as looking at the stick of butter and trying to find the center and then the center of the center or by scales. Honestly, that's the best way. This is not comparable to having scales. Is this going to change the way I use butter for baking? No, I am never gonna use this again. 59 to 64, it's quite a big difference. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. We've got the hot water steaming and we're gonna prepare some noodles. This one is actually really cool because it's very easy. Like we cook the egg and the noodles all together in four minutes. This seems like a good idea. It also looked really good. So so I am cooking some beef, beef noodles. I think that's what it is. This is a plastic container. I don't think I should be pouring boiling hot water directly into here. I want you guys to see what's going on. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Figure it out as it goes wrong. So. This is kind of what they've done, because we need space for the egg as well, so yeah, this seems alright. To this, we're gonna add the egg, this is so weird. This is a room temperature egg, I feel like if you use a cold one, this is probably not gonna work. To this, we're just going to add the hot water. I don't know exactly how much, because usually like we have like a specific measurement, but like it should be enough to cover the egg, right? Because if the egg is not, if the egg is not fully submerged, this is not gonna cook. So we're gonna put a lid on it. It looks like it might work, honestly. So by the way, this doesn't melt. So this is very good plastic. Set up a timer for four minutes. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to drain the water after because this is just too much water, but this is fine because we haven't added any flavoring. So we're not gonna lose any flavor. So four minutes. And four minutes, I've watched the video again and they actually do fill this up all the way to the top, kind of similar to what we did, just so that everything is fully submerged. And then after they just drain uh, the noodles, which I wish there was a better way to do this, but this is how we're doing it. Okay, we're losing. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention, but the egg was washed because otherwise, you know, you don't want to eat chicken poop flavor. <laughs> so now that the noodles are drained, we're gonna try to remove the egg. Like I like when the egg yolk is soft, but I cannot stand when the egg white is runny. Like, mm -mm, this is so difficult. Okay, one, two. Oh, Ooh. Um, so. That's, it's like creamy, like a creamy white. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the yellow is soft, so. To this, I'm gonna add all the flavorings and basically, according to the video, what happens is the egg in it, it will make this less salty and I think it will just add some nice texture. I am really funny about raw egg. Like I like a runny egg, I don't like it raw. And this is not grossing me out. So if you wanna try this, I would say this is 100% safe. Also, this is so hot still. Like do you see it steaming that it would cook now even if it was raw. So I think it truly comes down to the flavor. So. It does smell eggy, but like not in a terrible way. Consistency wise, these are definitely elevated. Do you see like even the color of it? It's nice, it's shiny. No. Now, is it going to taste nice and flavorful? We will see. Yes. If you didn't tell me there was egg in it, I don't think I would have realized. I would have thought it's some kind of sauce, maybe like maybe like sesame oil or something. I don't know, like, there's like a texture to it. They're smoother and creamier. The egg made it really creamy. So for texture, this is really good. There's an eggshell. Wow. Apart from that eggshell, this is incredible. I think in my opinion, this is a superior way to eat ramen noodles. And you get some extra protein, this is great. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first.
Even though this one is pretty simple, this is exactly what I was looking for for this video because it's ways that we can change the way we do everyday things. So every time, every time you're adding sauce to pasta, you just open this up and then squeeze it out and then that's it. It could be that using the lid is all we needed. We've established that there's no such thing as Velveeta cheese here in the UK. So unless anyone's willing to send it to me, I will accept it. I will send you my address. Unless someone is willing to do it, I am going to use a classic mac and cheese, all American. I still have to open it, right? You're still gonna need scissors for this, but you kind of, we're just gonna cut the very bit on top. We're just going to, um, this is quite difficult. It seems so easy the way they've done it. And now I'm like, how? Ugh. Okay, what about the bottom bit? I'm gonna get this as snug in the brim as I can, and we're just gonna pull it. Oh my god. I've never emptied anything. Guys, this is insane. I can see the other side of the packaging. Let me have a look on the inside. Oh my god. I have never. That's actually insane. Do you guys see that? It's empty, empty. You can literally see me from the bottom of it. Like, I don't even have to think about it. I hate food waste. I'm that person that when I use a sauce, for example, I pour the sauce out and then I add a little bit of water. Even if it's probably gonna ruin my dish, I will get every bit that I paid for. This is basically that, but without having to add water. This is perfect. I don't even have to think about it. You probably have to wash this, which you probably would anyways, because everyone washes the lid of the dishes that they use, and it would be really gross and disgusting if someone didn't. The sauce is in here, ready to cook. I am honestly kind of speechless. I wasn't expecting this to work. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. Innocent ice lolly. The reason why I wanted to include this one is because I actually grew up doing a very similar thing, which was transforming like orange juice or pineapple juice or whatever juice it was, we would put it into these little molds and basically transform the juice into freeze pops or whatever you call it. So you may be thinking this is not really a new way of consuming this, except because of the shape of the container of the innocent smoothies, this literally looks like it's made exactly for this, for freezing it. I'm actually more interested in the convenience of this to grab one from the freezer and just eat it on the go than I am for the actual flavor because I know this is gonna be good because I grew up doing this exact same thing. These two came from the freezer. I was very confident that I was gonna like it, so <laughs> I made two. And I really hope we can squeeze this out just the way they've done. So I think you'd probably have to cut the top with scissors or something. And my flavor is pineapple, apple, and carrot, which is actually my favorite one of these. Oh, this is freezing my hands. Okay, maybe we're gonna give it like 30 seconds. Maybe we just need to warm it up a little bit. But who's gonna warm me up after? Because <laughs> this is freezing. Should we pop this in the microwave? That is the question. Is this lined with like metal? Is it gonna sparkle? Oh, wait, we're getting there. It works. If you're willing to wait for a minute, it does work. And look at that. This is exactly what I meant. This looks like it's made exactly for this. This is like, and it is pretty good. Wow. This is not watery at all. This is incredible. Really, really good. I would drink this in 10 seconds. I wouldn't even enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe it's because I read the ingredients, but I feel like I'm tasting all the ingredients in it. This is honestly really, really good. I do wonder what happens when we need more. Can we squeeze out the full thing? Yep. This is, isn't this incredible? This is exactly why I wanted to make this video. This is so much better, so much more fun. Even in the winter, like, I can honestly tell you that I will never drink one of these. This is the superior way. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first.
idea i would say it's a 10 out of 10 the potential to change the way we eat chips i would say it's a 10 out of 10 however this is what's bothering me and why i wanted to try it the execution at the end of the video we're still holding the bag of potato chips i've been bamboozled too many times we've got a bag of doritos i wanted to use something more traditionally mexican cuisine Wow, I never realized, but the potato chips start right here. I'm not even joking, that's where they start. We're gonna be rolling for a long time. So I think what he does is he pushes the potato or corn chips up by folding each side inwards, I think. Or just, I, we'll figure it out. There's a lot of like crunchy Doritos in here. This is working. <laughs> I mean, we do have a lot to roll up, like, this is 80% air. Ain't got time for my kids, ain't got time for my family. <laughs> Excuse me, what? <laughs> this has been a possibility all along. This is incredible! I even like the leaning tower of pizza look out of this. I think it's kind of cute. It's like leaning towards me, like eat me. I will. It's really easy to adjust. Like I'm not even making this up. Like you guys saw, this will actually stay. Why is this blowing my mind more than so many things that we've tried in this video? I don't know, but this is blowing my mind. It's just the fact that I've, it's never occurred to me. And the best thing about this is that it's not wasteful at all because when you're done, I'm almost disappointed in myself because I feel like it's one of those things that how, how did we... This is the correct way to eat an almond. Take an almond. This is uh, not roasted nor salted. Just like bite off a tip or alternatively you can bite the center and it will uh, split into halves down the middle. This technique really centers around how you eat the flesh in the middle. If you were to pop this in your mouth, crunch, 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 swallow, you wouldn't get any of the good almond flavor. You wouldn't get any of like the sweetness in an almond. So what you need to do is you need to basically grind down the flesh into a paste with your teeth. So I do that by going like, And then this part, you can see it's a little bit hollowed out now. I mostly use this tooth, and I just go through the almond, grinding the flesh into a paste. And it's very sweet and tastes like a million times better. Can you seriously watch this video? And it doesn't matter how stupid you think this is. Can you live your life without ever trying this? Because if you can, you are stronger than me. Because <laughs> Are we missing out on the way we eat almonds? Possibly. And salted and roasted. So first of all, this is the way I eat almonds normally. It's great for unsalted and roasted. Not my first choice, but you know. So according to TikTok, we are going to bite the end. Okay, it didn't split or anything. We're gonna grind it on our teeth. And this is supposed to make it taste sweeter. I don't know, like, this is stupid, but is it? Someone has to try this, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna use my bottom teeth for this. Ooh, let me try with a different one. Okay, I'm gonna bite the end. Wait. <coughs> I forgot I'm allergic to nuts. I'm joking, that's not funny. Am I? Karma hits quite quick. Oh my god. So at first it seems like this is stupid because you're like, this just tastes like almond, but you have to, you have to keep on scraping the almond until you get like a little almond paste. It's literally like a paste. It's warm and kind of like a weird texture. My camera just died as I was trying to explain to you, but basically once you get that paste of almonds in your mouth, it tastes softer, sweeter. I don't know. When I eat a Kit Kat, I usually bite the ends and then I peel it off all around the chocolate and then I eat just the biscuit, the wafer on the inside on its own. It's kind of one of those things, like if you eat the inside separately, you get basically a wafer cookie on the inside. So this is a way to taste the wafer of an almond. This is so stupid, like, you're welcome. I can't believe this content is free. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. 
This one is so bizarre and weird that I kind of want to try it. Like, I don't really need this in my life. Like, I'm perfectly fine with opening a can and pouring it. Who am I to guess what you guys need? So it might be that this is going to help one of you guys or change your life in any kind of way. And I would love, I would love to provide that experience. So we're going to make a tiny little hole on this side of the can. One on this side. Okay, now we're gonna use um, some of these little wooden sticks, but we're gonna place this one on this side. Okay, this kind of works exactly the way they've done it, so it might be they, they got it all figured out. And this is going to direct the stream. Oh my god, please don't spill everywhere. Oh my god, this is so stupid. I mean, it's working, but like, let me see if you see better against the... I mean, it does work annoyingly. <laughs> this is one of the dumbest things in this video. Can someone let me know what the purpose is? Because it might be that I'm not seeing it wrong. I mean, it does kind of work though. <laughs> Don't do it with any carbonated drink or any like beer or something like that because it is going to ruin it. There's something about the bubbles going all around this and then through the wooden stick that just removes all the bubbles. You can use it as a magic trick if you're willing to ruin your drink. This changed my life for the worst. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. Could it be the cooking an egg in the oven? I have never heard of this and I was like, we need to try it because it's possible that this is gonna change the way we cook eggs. So I'm kind of doing what they've done in the video, which is adding some non-stick. Why did we do this? The eggs are not gonna stick, it's an eggshell. I don't have an air fryer, but I've got an oven with this thing called 4D air function. Basically transforms the oven into, into an air fryer. We're gonna put the eggs inside this little, I'm only making four because I am i don't think this is gonna work. Just keeping it real. The oven has been preheated to 250 degrees and we're gonna put it in for 16 minutes. There is no way in the world that these are not going to explode. So take a Good final look at my eggs because these are going to explode. Hey Siri, stop. It's ready. Oh, I'm so scared these are gonna- Oh my god, I'm gonna cover my eyes. These are gonna explode. I'm gonna transfer them into the cold water. That one was the one that burst, but it didn't spill anything. So honestly, it really doesn't make a mess. How strange is that this egg is still fully intact, even though it was very, very hot. 250 degrees is a lot. You still need to do some cleaning, but you can literally wipe this. You can literally spray some product and wipe this and that's it. Like this, you don't even need to actually wash the whole thing. So if they're cooked, this will change the way I eat boiled eggs because I might start eating them. If this peels off easy, then there's like a weird mark. There's like a black dot, like a scar on top. What is that? Has anyone ever seen that in an egg before? Like how strange is that? Could be that it just burned. Oh, it's got another one here. I will not eat this egg because I don't know what this is. Okay, they definitely failed to mention this. I don't want to freak anyone out, but the egg is literally staring at me. I'm not gonna taste this one. I'm gonna pick one that is not cursed because that freaked me out. If something bad happens to me in the next 24 hours, guys, you guys know it was the cursed egg. It could just be that these eggs are rotten. That is a possibility. I'm not even being dramatic, but this is not appetizing. <laughs> like this egg is literally like black. This might be because it burned in the oven. And maybe if you're making eggs just for yourself, this is completely fine to like put them in the oven. but. Honestly, I'm gonna keep it super real. I don't think I would do this again. I would rather not eat boiled eggs than not be able to tell the difference of whether they're good or not. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. Watching this TikTok felt like I was watching something illegal because I think the lady was using plastic straws. In my country, I can only find paper straws. Like it's fully ruled out and thankfully save the dolphins. I also hate paper straws, but I love the dolphins more. So. so we're gonna try this out with paper straws. I'm gonna try it with these miniature like cocktail sausages because they are quite slippery. So I feel like that might be 
very slippery. And that might work perfectly for this because I wouldn't struggle with sushi. First of all, let's try this with regular chopsticks. Maybe I'll try it to hold it like from the sides. No, I can do that too. I don't know how to make this difficult. I'm not trying to flex, but I can literally hold anything with chopsticks. It's just a talent. So using a straw, we're gonna try to create kind of like, um, like a little corner. First of all, let me see if this even fits. Barely. I think so we got the chopsticks in so this is kind of where you get like a long stick and then I guess we go No, this is breaking. No. Oh my god. This kind of works. If you don't know how to hold it that works. Look at that. I Mean oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna try it with this hand. Oh, this is good I can even hold him like this I really wasn't able to use chopsticks with my left hand. So this is 100% approved. For those of you who want to learn how to use a chopstick, I can see that this would make it a lot easier. And I feel like eventually you'd get the grip of it. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. Cheese platters are so popular right now. I feel like every single one of my friends is doing cheese platters, picnics. Like it's very trendy right now. It might be because it's summer. It's probably just that. So even though this is not a unique way to eat sliced meats, it is a unique way to display your cheese platter. I'm just assuming that all of you guys love cheese platters as much as I do. And this might be a way to improve the presentation. I haven't decided if that's better than just looking at the meat displayed, which also doesn't look visually appetizing. I'm gonna use this glass because it's quite thin around and it's a good size. And I think this might work. Most of these things that you see on TikTok, as soon as you start trying them, you realize whether they're real or not. And you can just see that someone actually came up with this. Like this is a real thing. Sliced meat is something that is so gross to me, but also that I love and it tastes so good. My Portuguese blood is like, you might try to hate it, but we still want it. From this side, it doesn't look good. Anything I could say about this is inappropriate. So I won't say anything. Without breaking the glass, I'm gonna press it a little bit. I smell like a New York deli or my third grade lunchbox. So from this side, look, it does not look impressive. However, I'm not gonna flip it yet, but this will blow your mind. That's beautiful. So I'm gonna flip this. I feel like this is pretty tight. I'm gonna flip. If there's ever been a time for a close up, it is now. I think mine looks better than the one that the girl did. I don't know if it's my plate, the type of salami that I use. That's some like Gordon Ramsay level of presentation. You need to give this a try and also you need to see it in real life. I don't think this is translating on camera as well as it is here. I'm not actually going to cook this pizza because I've got plenty of foods from this video that I have to sort out. I want to see if we can actually cut this. I feel like if I... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, I'm so glad I get these things on camera because this happens to me all the time. And then, like, how is this not infuriating, right? Like, you literally had one job. It's like a DIY pizza. I'm not gonna remove it from the bag because they didn't do it in the video and I think that's kind of important. If I was cooking this for myself, I would get four slices out of this. Here goes the first one. It just won't. Ugh. I'm too light. Wow, that worked perfectly. I almost died. It might be onto something. Let's try to do this side. It should be easier now. Okay, now we kind of messed up. From the back, it actually looks pretty good, but from the front, kind of separated weird. I think we accidentally burst the bag and now this is all messed up. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna put it back in the box and it will be fine. If it tastes like pizza and it doesn't look like pizza, it's still pizza. If I was cooking for myself, I would 100% do this. It never occurred to me, but I would use it. I would be embarrassed to do this for someone else because I'd be like, I love using a knife, being a functional member of society. It's great. I 
I saw a lot of hateful comments on this specific TikTok, which made me confused because the only thing I was interested in was they've made an egg, like a fried egg in a miniature waffle maker. And I thought it was genius because I've owned one of these before and the only thing I made in it was waffles. So it never occurred to me that I could basically cook other things in it. I already know this is gonna be my new preferred. Oh. I'm gonna crack the egg into it and I'm interested in how long this is gonna take to cook because if it's quick, I'm sold. If it takes too long, then I would prefer to make a regular fried egg. So this is actually genius because this is a non-stick coating. So that means we probably didn't even need any oil. There goes our egg. This is genius. It fits the egg perfectly. I almost just wanna cook it like this because it looks so beautiful, but no, we're gonna cook it because I want this to be fast because that is definitely something that I would be Please don't overflow. I kind of want to check because I do wonder if it would be possible to cook the egg and the egg yolk be a little soft. Like that would be great, but I don't think that's possible because we're already running a risk by cooking it here. I mean, if we got it out now, this is so, that literally took 30 seconds. I'm not exaggerating. This is cooked. This is like a waffle but just with all the flour and everything else, it's just the egg. The yellow is not as soft as I would have liked. It's still fully cooked, but I am happy that it's fully cooked. So I'm also gonna add some salt. I mean, I'm assuming this is gonna taste incredible. That is the only thing that could potentially change my mind at this point because I am so- Also, let me unplug it before I cause a house fire. I'm never looking back from this experience. What is that for? Maybe there will be a house fire. That's even easier to clean than when you make a waffle. Look, there's barely anything in it. There's literally a tiny bit of egg here. This is great. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. At first I didn't really understand this, but then I went into the comments and it finally made sense. So basically, this is supposed to be a way to eat your hot dogs. And if you're wearing lipstick or lip gloss, apparently the sauces kind of get everywhere and an easy way to do it is to twist the sausage. So we've got some, it's a lip tint. This is mine, by the way. I use this sometimes, except usually I put it in my finger and then I just put it in my lips if it's like dry. I bought it because my favorite member of BTS. According to some weird underground blog, that's what he uses. We're gonna put some of this lip tint on. It should be lipstick. I just don't have any at home. This is gonna make the sauce really sticky. Also, it's gonna make me look beautiful. I'm colorblind, so I wouldn't see. No, I do see. <laughs> Test this out. I'm gonna do, these are very small. I'm gonna do two. I mean, in this one, I'm gonna do just the top covered, just, you know, the normal way. I cannot believe I wasted my expensive lip tint on this. And then for this one, I actually need to do this with one. This is difficult to do with one sausage only. Let's just imagine that's the ketchup on top. If you're outside somewhere, like an event or something, you'd probably do this with something else, is you twist it so you minimize the amount of sauce that comes in contact with your lip. Just to make this fair, but it's still the same one on top. Let's see how much sauce I get on my lips. It doesn't really bother me that much, but I guess I'm not like really the audience for this. I'm just providing a service. I would probably just wipe it with my hand because I am gross and I don't really care. The lip tint definitely makes everything stick to it more. I never realized this because I usually just put the tiniest. Imagine if you have like a lip gloss or a lipstick, it's probably even worse. So with this sausage that we flipped, wow. That works. I really wouldn't be bothered about sauce sticking to my lips because I just wipe it after, right? But one thing I can say is that this actually works. So if you're worried about sauce getting all over your face when you eat a hot dog, and I'm assuming this would work with anything else that has a sauce, just do a 180, 360, maths again. Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. Even though making mashed potatoes at home is not really something that I'm interested in, just because I'm I'm happy with going to the supermarket and buying the pre-made stuff. But I have made mashed potatoes from scratch before and I had to buy this weird machine that kind of like 
peel the potatoes and fluff them up. It was really annoying because I had to spend the extra money for it and I never used it again. For that reason, I thought this would be worth putting in this video just so that you don't have to waste money. I'm imagining that you're gonna be using a hand mixer, but I don't have one. I'm sure it will work just the same with the hand mixer. So these potatoes, I actually boiled them. These are very soft, look. Like, I peeled way too many potatoes. They're definitely soft, because I don't wanna, I don't want this to be my fault. So, I watched the video last night and I didn't watch it again, but I think they add some butter. I mean, it's mashed potatoes, so I'm assuming they did. And salt and pepper. I made a little too many potatoes, so we're gonna have to salt this really well. I'm just hoping that it works because I spent way too much time peeling potatoes for this to fail now. If this is gonna throw potatoes all over my house, I'm about to be so mad. It's just tossing the potatoes around. Maybe? It looks like potato salad at this point. I need to show you because this is kind of funny. This is literally a potato salad. If you want a quicker way to mix your potato salad, there you go. I think we might need to go a little faster. Maybe? Life changing, it definitely is. Why does I have the consistency of restaurant mashed potatoes? You do need to scrape the sides because some of the potatoes are not even blended and the other ones are whipped up restaurant quality. This is some ratatouille, French gastronomy kind of mashed potatoes. Keep in mind that not all of it has been mixed. I need to remix it, but just look at the consistency so far. It looks like it's got cheese or something in it. This video has been the greatest revelation of my life. I've honestly been filming this for 12 hours and I would film for 12 more. This is perfect. I'm getting one of my fancy plates. That's how you know it's real. But just look at the consistency of this. This is some Thanksgiving mashed potato consistency. I don't know, I've never been to a Thanksgiving dinner. I would love if someone invited me. I will keep my DMs open. This is a great consistency. This is incredible. This is very, very good. I do like my mashed potatoes heavily seasoned, so it's like a cloud. This is so good. This is so, so good. 12 hours filming this video and I would honestly film this for 12 more. I just have no more dishes and I've got to clean up everything and do the dishwashing because we're out. I love learning new things and I feel like we've done it together. So let me know if you enjoy that. If you want a part two, giving the video a like is the best way to let me know. And also, please don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on. So when I make the part two, you don't miss out. I wish you guys could message me on TikTok, but I don't think that's possible. So. Instagram is like the only way for me to communicate with you guys via private message, which is my preferred way of messaging you guys. And I think that's you guys' preferred way as well. So if you've got TikToks that you want me to recreate for a part two, send them to me on Instagram. Or if you can help me out, figure out how to do private messages on TikTok, uh, we can do that as well. I love you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.